knowing the inner workings and architecture of a tool can go a long way, particularly if you're using the tool on a daily basis. Bug fixes and troubleshooting become a breeze, and you may often find yourself using the same mundane tool in new and inventive ways. Hi guys, my name is Arya, and today in this session, we are gonna be talking about the architecture of Appium, a tool that has found widespread use in the domain of automation testing of mobile applications. So these are the following topics that I will be covering in this session today. So first of all, we will be going through a brief introduction of Appium. Then we will be going through some Appium concepts that are key in understanding the architecture of Appium. After that, we will be discussing a protocol that is used for communication between Appium and clients, and that is the JSON wire protocol. After that, we will dive deep into the Appium architecture, which should be a breeze to understand after we've gone through the concepts and the understanding of a protocol. In the end, I will also be going through how Appium works on Android and iOS both, as there seems to be a little difference in their workings. Okay, so let's get started. Now, before we dive deep into the architecture of Appium, it is only just that I provide a brief introduction to Appium for viewers who have ended up on this particular video as their first video for Appium. Okay, so what exactly is Appium? Well, Appium is an open source cross-platform automation testing tool. It is currently geared towards providing a seamless automation testing experience for mobile applications that run on Android and iOS. Appium is a server written using Node.js. A few years back, Appium was a command line interface only tool and it was majorly installed using the Node package manager, also known as NPM. Now credits going to the recent development by the developer team, Appium has released a GUI based desktop application that can be installed across the spectrum of Linux distributions, Microsoft Windows, and Mac OS X. The current release of Appium can be downloaded from appium.io. Also, it is noteworthy to mention that Appium is a cross platform app in all its senses. By that, I mean that Appium can be used to test mobile applications, whether they run on iOS or Android. Above that, Appium can be used to test hybrid, native, and web applications and Appium itself runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So this makes Appium a pretty cross-platform tool in all its senses, okay? So that was a brief introduction to Appium. Now let's go over some key concepts regarding Appium that will help you understand its architecture with ease. So we're gonna discuss three key concepts that are intrinsic to Appium's architecture. The first is a client-server architecture. Now Appium at its heart is a server written using Node.js. The server works using a client server architecture. Now, when a client sends requests to a server for any of the services that are being hosted on that particular server, and the proceeding exchange is done through a series of requests and responses between the client and server, the architecture is commonly called a client server architecture. Appium follows the client server architecture where requests regarding automation are sent to the Appium server. The server processes the request in its own unique way, which we will get into in a second and then responds with the test results or log files. The second key concept that we need to go through is Appium sessions. So everything testing is done encapsulated in a session. This is pretty obvious given the fact that Appium is a simple client and server-based mechanism. The client sends post requests, also known as session requests, to the server. These requests carry information in a JSON object format and communication is executed using the JSON wire protocol, which we will get into just in a while. The third thing that we need to understand as an Appium concept is the concept of desired capabilities. So Appium works differently on iOS and Android. Now, since it is a cross-platform tool, a mechanism must exist to differentiate between the two operating system session requests. This particular problem statement was also addressed with the help of JSON objects called desired capabilities. Desired capabilities are key value pairs of information that distinguish the establishment of a session for the testing of an Android app to that of an iOS app. With arguments like platform name, device name, app package, and app activity, it becomes fairly easy for the server to distinguish between the two operating systems. Okay, now that the few key concepts are done with, let's take a look at the JSON wire protocol. The JSON wire protocol is the mechanism used for communicating between client and server. It is developed by web driver developers, and according to them, the protocol is a bunch of standardized endpoints that are exposed to the client using a RESTful API. This allows the web driver to establish communication with the server and client to perform automation. 
Now Appium uses the mobile JSON wire protocol, which is an extension to the Selenium JSON wire protocol and it is used to control different mobile phone behaviors other than just setting up a communication stream with JSON objects being sent via the JSON wire protocol many information regarding the client the server the session and other web elements can be passed through to the Appium server other than that information regarding cookies capabilities log files and proxy objects can also be sent using the JSON wire protocol using the same key value pair architecture okay now it's time that we go ahead and discuss the Appium architecture so as I promised if you have paid attention to the concepts that we have just discussed then getting a grasp of the architecture is going to be a breeze to make it even easier let me jot down the architecture in a pointwise manner okay so first of all we have the Appium server now Appium is an HTTP server using node.js and this blue color icon that you see on your screen is the representation of a server now the arrows that you see coming in and out of the server are the requests and the responses now a request is sent by the client and the response from the server is also sent back to the client so let's see what happens inside when a request comes in so when a request comes in to the server the appium server actually kind of differentiates between the request that is being sent and decides whether it is an ios request or an android request so if it is an android request it will send it to the ui automator and if it is an ios request it will send it to the xui test api now these two apis are just ui automation apis so ui automator is a framework that is developed by the android developers and it is basically used for automating your ui when you are actually automating your mobile application test cases okay so XUI test is a similar thing for Apple and it is basically an integration with Xcode which is just an IDE that is used for writing iOS apps on a MacBook. Okay, so once the server has actually decided by going through the desired capabilities arguments that whether it is an iOS request or an Android request, it actually processes it and sends it to two different files. So for Android it is called the bootstrap.jar file and for iOS it's the bootstrap.js file. We will see how bootstrap.jar and bootstrap.js comes into the picture when we are discussing how Appium works on Android and iOS differently. Now, the automation is done using bootstrap.js and bootstrap.jar and a few other files on a simulator or an emulator or a real device. So that's a great part of Appium that you can use all three types of devices. Now, after the automation is done and the test results are out, they are sent back to the server and the server sends it back as a server response to the client and this response can be seen as log files or just basic test case results okay so this is a general architecture of appium it's pretty simple it's just an http server that is again connected to ui automators and then after that it is the ui automator's job to actually automate the test case on a device now this device might be an emulator simulator or a real device in itself and after the test cases have been actually executed on the said device it is sent back as a server response and then the same server response is sent back to the client okay so now let's discuss how appium is a little different on android and ios both okay so appium on android uses the ui automator framework for automation now as i had just said ui automator is a framework built by android developers for automation purposes so let's take a look at the exact way that appium works on android now, as you guys can see, I have listed down the three key elements that are there in any Appium architecture. On the extreme left hand side of your screen, you see that is a client. Now, what the client does is the client has already the client libraries and the necessary jar files already installed on it. So, to, for Appium to be running for automation purposes, you need both these files the client libraries and the necessary jar files. Now, if you want to go through how to install Appium and successfully set it up, you can go ahead and check out my Appium installation video. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now, after you have set up Appium on your respective devices by installing the client libraries and the necessary jar files, what happens is the Appium client, whether it be written in C, Java, Python, connects with the Appium server and communicates via a JSON wire protocol. So if you guys have paid attention till now, you will be knowing that the JSON wire protocol is used for communication between the client and the server and mostly JSON objects are sent using the JSON wire protocol. 
After that, RPM server creates an automation session for the client and also checks the desired capabilities of the client and connects with the respective vendor provided framework, in this case, the UI automator. Now, the UI automator will then communicate with bootstrap.jar, which is running in the simulator, emulator, or real device for performing client operations. Here, bootstrap.jar plays the role of a TCP server, which we can use to send the test commands in order to perform the actions on the Android device using UI automator. After the test scripts have been executed, the test results are sent back to the server using an automator response, which is also communicated using the JSON via protocol. And then in the end, the server sends it back to the client in the form of server responses or log files in itself. So this is exactly how Appium works on Android. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how Appium works on iOS and how it differs from Android. So as you guys can see, there's not much difference in the key elements of the architecture. You have the client on the left hand side, you have the Appium server in the center, and on the extreme right hand side, you have your iOS device. That could be an emulator, simulator, or a real device in itself. Okay, so first of all, your client must have the necessary client libraries and the necessary jar files. This is obvious for both sides. If you are working on Android or iOS, you need the necessary jar files and the client libraries. Now, the Appium client will then connect to the Appium server using a JSON via protocol and send all the desired capabilities. Now, after starting the desired capabilities, the Appium server will actually send a server request to XUI test API, which in turn will use the bootstrap.js file. So the bootstrap.js file will be running on the iOS machine, and this machine could be a simulator, emulator, or a real device, as I just said. Now, bootstrap.js will perform the action on our application that is being tested. And after the execution of the command, the client sends back the message to the Appium server with the log details of the executed command, which are then sent back to the client in form of server response and log files. So the main difference is that instead of UI Automator, iOS apps use the XUI test API, and instead of the bootstrap.jar file, a bootstrap.js file is used out here. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this Appium architecture video. I hope you guys learned a lot about Appium architecture and you are crystal clear about how Appium works as a tool. If you have any doubts or any sort of question regarding this video, you can post them down in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'll meet you guys in the next video. Until next time, goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!